Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to another lecture given by the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research Incorporated. First of all, this is a school and not a church. And we're not associated with any church organization, Jehovah Witnesses, or any other denomination that you have taught in the world today. Now this school was founded in the year of 1931 by Dr. Henry C. Kenley, who had a divine vision and revelation direct from Yahweh. And the charts that you see pictorially illustrated are results of that divine vision and revelation. We have branch schools operating throughout the United States, also schools operating in various countries throughout the world. Now we'll be explaining the name you see here. Now Yahweh is the true and correct name of our Heavenly Father which was once laid down in the scriptures. We have Yahweh symbolized as a cloud on this chart because Yahweh symbolized himself as a cloud in many passages of your Bible. We have the cloud extending all around the edge of the chart so that everything on the chart is within the cloud. Just as everything that exists exists within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now in this pure spirit state, Yahweh has no descriptive shape or form in which he is the ultimate source and substance, the limits and the bounds of everything that exists. Now when your translators has come across the true and correct name of our Heavenly Father Yahweh, they have usually inserted the English title, Lord. Yahweh now taking on a superincorporeal shape and form within himself is known as Elohim. Now superincorporeal means without physical flesh and blood. And in this state Yahweh Elohim can only be seen in a divine vision and revelation as stated in Exodus 24, 9 and 10. Then when a Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and they saw the Elohim of Israel. Now remember, they saw Elohim in a divine vision and revelation. Now when your translators has come across the true and correct divine title for Yahweh in shape and form known as Elohim, they have usually inserted the English title, God. Yahweh Elohim now manifested in a physical body as the Savior of the world is Yahshua the Messiah, as stated in John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with Yahweh, and the Word was Yahweh. And in the 14th verse, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, your translators has come across the true and correct original Hebrew name of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. They have usually inserted false and erroneous names, such as Jesus Christ. But remember, Yahweh in pure spirit as the Father, Yahweh in a superincorporeal shape and form known as the world of Son as Elohim, and Yahweh manifested in a physical body as the Savior of the world is Yahshua the Messiah. Yahweh in his two manifestations but one spirit, as stated in 1 John 5 and 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Now, my investigation on your part will prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt that the name and title we teach here are true and correct, but that the names and titles that you have taught in the world are false and erroneous. For an example, look up the letter J. It is not and never has been in any part of the Hebrew language. It did not come into existence in any language prior to the Middle Ages. Therefore, such names as Jehovah and Jesus are impossible renders of our Heavenly Father true and correct name, Yahweh and His Son, Yahshua the Messiah. Our aims, the primary constitutional objectives of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as it really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race, nationality, sex, creed, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called laws of nature and powers laden in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures compared to religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating in mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. 
8. To earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. And 9. To make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained that there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And 10. To inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our wife's word is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. We'll have prayer by Ms. Miranda Gonzalez, a song selection and scripture lesson by Dr. Vanessa Collins. Scripture lesson will be John the 10th chapter. about heart and mind for prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father Yahweh, we are indeed thankful and grateful for another opportunity to assemble here in this manner with the brethren. We are thankful that you woke us this morning clothed in our right mind, still with a sincere de desire to gather together with the brethren and to hear, partake of this divine vision and revelation. In this last day and time, we are thankful for your long suffering, your mercy, and your grace, and for revealing unto us that we are sons and partaker of this gift in, in light. Um, as we gather together this morning, um, we are thankful for the hearts that you have moved. And as you have us here, we ask that you steal our heart and our mind, any and all <laughs> preconceived ideas, concepts, and opinions of what you are to present to us today. These and all blessings we ask in thy son's name, Yahshua the Messiah. Let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs>
Scripture lesson for this morning is John 10th chapter. I'll be reading from the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts revised by the late A.B. Trainer, the Scripture Research Association Incorporated. John 10th chapter. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Yahshua unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Yahshua unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the shepherd of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. There was a division therefore again among the Jews for these sayings. And many of them said, He hath a demon and is mad. Why hear ye him? Others said, These are not the words of him that hath a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Yahshua walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Messiah, tell us plainly. Yahshua answered them, 
I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are in accord. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Yahshua answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, makest thyself Elohim. Yahshua answered them, Is it not written in your law, I say it, ye are Elohim? If he called them Elohim, unto whom the word of Yahweh came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent unto the world, Thou blasphemest, because I said I am the son of Elohim. If I do not the works of my father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the father is in me and I in him. Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand and went away again beyond Jordan and to the place where John at first baptized, and there he abode. And many resorted unto him and said, John did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true, and many believed on him there. Our first speaker for this morning, Lesh, will be Mr. Charmaine Calloway. Good morning. Good morning. I'm thankful to Yahweh to have a testimony of this glorious gospel that we have received from the Father, Yahweh, through His Son, Yahshua the Messiah. And um, Yahweh has so many things that's going on in my mind. So I pray that Yahweh will get me out of the way and that He will express those things that He wants to declare this day. Now, That scripture lesson was beautiful because Yahweh is telling you that there is only one way and that you have to come through the door. The door is the Messiah and the Messiah is the truth. Mm -hmm. And the truth is Yahweh is the Savior. Now, Yahweh said that through Yahshua, he said that there is only one way, one truth. So I want you to get me that. Uh, I think that's, go ahead and I want you to start where it's talking about where you just read in the scripture lesson about him being the door first. Where he's talking about being the door and then I want where it says there's only one faith. Okay. John 10 and 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way. The same is a thief and a robber. Now, if you're going to enter into the Messiah, then there's only one way, and that's through the truth. And you have to know what the truth is. See, all our lifetime, we have been duped. We did not have a clue about our Heavenly Father. We didn't know His name. We didn't know that He had a name. We didn't know anything. We were in darkness. And the only way to come from under that darkness is that you have to go through the door. Read. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. See, we hear his voice. We hear Yahweh's voice. Read. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. See, he called us by name. That's why we're sitting in here today. And because we heard the Father's voice, that's how we're coming out. Now go over and get me about one faith. Ephesians 4, 4 and 1. Therefore the... I therefore, the prisoner of Elohim, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. See, we're a prisoner. We're a prisoner. We cannot. Yahweh, he has held us captive because this is the truth. We, we can't, we, there's no way we can get out. We can't deny him. There's no way we can do that. Because we know that this is the truth and that it come from Yahweh through his son, Yahshua the Messiah. We're not leaving him out because they are one. They are not separate. This is the same spirit. There's only one spirit. So if there's only one spirit, then there's no division. And Yahweh has always told us that there is no division. Yahweh manifested he came down, manifested as Elohim, and then he manifested in the flesh as the Savior of the world, Yahshua the Messiah. That's one spirit. Two manifestations of the one spirit. Read. Mm -hmm. Fourth verse. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One body and one spirit, even as you are called in say that again one hope one hope of your calling one hope one hope mm -hmm. so it all is one mm -hmm. the one. father is one mm -hmm. one elohim one elohim one faith one faith one baptism one baptism one is yahweh and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all and that baptism we're talking about a spiritual baptism. Right. We're talking about being baptized in the name. Mm -hmm. See, because the name, there's power in the name. Right. If you're wanting eternal life, if that's what you're seeking, and I want you to go to the preference of the Holy Name Bible, mm -hmm. and I want you to start at the very top when he's talking about the very first sentence. Mm -hmm. If you were planting a tree. Now slow this down. Mm -hmm. If you are planning a trip okay. through a strange country, through a strange country, would you knowingly choose an inaccurate map? Would you choose an inaccurate map? Which shows non-existent roads and bridges. Non-existent roads and bridges. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. These are non-existent roads and bridges to eternal life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you will not. These roads, this erroneous titles, 
and erroneous names will not get you to the to eternal life. Right. If you want to go to New York, mm -hmm. will you go take the highway to New Orleans? No one leaves. Because if you take that road to New Orleans, mm -hmm. are you going to end up in New York? New York? The same, if you want eternal life, mm -hmm. if you take this road, mm -hmm. you will not end up with eternal life. Right. Right. That's right. That's right. This road does not lead you to eternal life. Right. This road is darkness. Mm -hmm. This road, there's no life in it because this is a title. Lord, that is a title. Anyone of high authority and even and lords over there in England, but those lords have a name. Right. All those lords in England have a name. But you want to tell me and see, I'm kind of hot, too, because Yahweh put. But I understand Yahweh put me in the position with my boss to say some things to me. But I know my father's talking to me. You not bothering you not. You're not doing what you think you're doing. See, I see Yahweh. Right. I'm not looking at the man. Right. I'm looking at what Yahweh is telling me that I need to do for me to stand on this that I have to, am saying that I believe. Right. See, that's what we're here to do. We ain't playing no games. Right. We're not playing no games here. You can say what you want to say. You can do what you want to do. But I know what Yahweh has done for me and proven unto me. Right. So that what you think about what I believe, I don't care. Right. Because it's Yahweh that has come and has through his son Yahshua, through the truth, has revealed this unto me. And for that, I am eternally thankful and grateful unto Yahweh for that. See, this is a gift. Not any man can just come in here and just take and, and believe this. You are not believing this on your own. You're not here on your own. It's through the grace and mercy of Yahweh that you are able to see anything about him. Right. And see, you can't take it for granted. That's right. And we are at the point in time where you're going to have to be able to stand firm and tall and say, we believe in Yahweh. And through his son, Yahshua Messiah, he's brought us to truth. That's what we're going to stand in today. And we are declaring the Father unto you. That's what we are saying. So... Read. <laughs> of course not. You would get the most accurate map available. See, you're going to get the most accurate map. Now, if you can find fault in this, mm -hmm. then that means that's not accurate. That's right. mm -hmm. This is not the accurate map. Mm -hmm. Read. The Holy Name Version provides a more nearly accurate map. Now that's the only reason why we use the Holy Name Bible mm -hmm. is because it has the name, the correct names uh, in them. But of course the Holy Name Bible has errors just like everything else if man has their hand in something. That's right, right. So we understand that. But Yahweh, the creator of heaven's earth, earth is able to go, come in and correct those things. Mm -hmm. He's able to let us know what is right and what's wrong. That's right. And that's what he's done. Read. Go. The Holy Name Version provides a more nearly accurate map of the kingdom of heaven and the <coughs> roads and paths leading to and through it and more clearly marks the pitfalls and dangers awaiting the traveler than any other version now available. See, the dangers and pitfalls. That's what these are. And it's so deceptive because you never would have thought. We never thought. We never thought anything was wrong. And see, that's the state of the condition of the whole world is that Lord God, Jesus Christ, and this, what Yahweh was showing me reading that, and so you need to take the time, I'm not going to read all of it, but you really need to take the time and go back and read the preface. That's right. That's right. Because Yahweh is showing you how the adversary works, and he just dumbs you down and numbs you, mm -hmm. and you just continuing on in something without any... No thought. And you just, you're continuing on in something and you, you never, if he doesn't stop you and make you think intelligently, then you never ever come to the conclusion that all of this is wrong and false. Read. 
to the extent that a person's beliefs and conduct are based upon doctrinal misinformation. <clears throat> doctrinal misinformation. Supported by mistranslation. Supported by mistranslation. He follows a distorted map of spiritual territory. Dist it, it's a distorted map of spiritual territory. This is talking about your soul. Mm -hmm. The information or the knowledge that you are required to have for your soul salvation. Read. The Holy Name version is an improvement over other versions, a better map, simply because it makes use of data which have been known for a long time, but which generally have been confined to footnotes, commentaries, encyclopedias, and technical publications. So this data, this information is known. Mm -hmm. But it's been it's been dumbed down or put in footnotes mm -hmm. to, for you not to know that you know the importance of it has been just brought down. Right. That's what they did. They brought it down. So uh, go right there to uh, the Masorites. Okay, the Masorites. The Jewish scholars of the great synagogue in closing the Canaan of the Old Testament text, which is known as the Masoretic text, made changes and modifications of many passages to conform to their traditional teachings. Their traditional teachings. The Not what Yahweh was teaching, but their uh, traditional teachings. Go ahead. Thus they established a fixed doctrine for the Jewish dispersion. These same scholars, in their attempt to safeguard the unity of divine worship at Jerusalem, changed the passage in Isaiah 19:18 to read, On that day there shall be five cities in the land of Egypt, speaking the language okay. of Canaan. You can skip that part because the, the point was is that the scholars mm -hmm. had, they had, they were making an attempt to safeguard the, the, the name. Mm -hmm. They felt like it was too sacred to be uttered. Mm -hmm. See, Yahweh never told them that. Throughout those scriptures, if you do, you read your scriptures, Yahweh always told them about his name. Mm -hmm. He told them that his name, uh, he, um, get me, uh, um, Exodus 20. And Elohim spake all these words, saying, I am Yahweh thy Elohim, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no Elohim before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven idol, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. <laughs> Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, Yahweh, thy Elohim, am a jealous Elohim, visiting the iniquity of the fathers of Okay, I want it where it says he won't bring his name to naught. 7, 27. Seven Thou shalt not take away the name of Yahweh, thy Elohim, to bring it to naught. So he, Yahweh told him when he was giving the law to the Israelites back there, he told them, don't, bring, don't take my name and bring it to naught. He told that, and that's throughout the theme, throughout the, the scriptures. Yahweh's talking about his name. He is telling you, the power, see there's so much, there's power in the name of Yahweh. So he told them, don't, don't, don't Take my name and bring it down to naught. Um, so go back to where it's talking about the Masorites in uh, safeguarding the Tetragrammaton. Okay. Back in the Holy Name Bible. Okay. Oh, the Masorites in safeguarding the Tetragrammaton, the four-letter Holy Name of the Most High, substituted in over 130 places in the Hebrew text the name of the Canaanitish deity Adonai and in some places Elohim wherever anthropomorphism 
ascribing the physical attributes of man to Yahweh was implied. See, if you go into the original scriptures, you'll still see that the tetragrammaton is in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Yahweh never allowed them to take that out. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when the Masoretes, when they're reading these scriptures and they come across Yahweh, the tetragrammaton, mm -hmm. it is now being ingrained in the man that when you see that name or you see the tetragrammaton, that you say Adonai. Mm -hmm. And then once that had been accustomed, you know, when I see that, I deny, I deny. The name was lost because they, every time you see that now, Adonai, Adonai, you're not, and you've taken Yahweh's name and you've just pretty much uh, just brought it to nothing. Just what he just told them in Exodus, the 20th chapter. That's what they did. Read. Wherever they left the Tetragrammaton intact, the they place diacritical marks beneath it to indicate pronunciation of the word to be spoken at a night, not the word written, Yahweh, which the Jews considered too sacred to be spoken aloud. Okay, and then go to the next page over at the top. Okay. Also, in their effort to divert their people from the apostolic New Testament, the Masoretes altered many texts in opposing the Messianic teachings, the Christian theologians. Christian theologians have translated the scriptures from a non-Israelitish approach to both the Old and New Testaments, thus losing sight of what the great apostle said in the ninth chapter of Romans, verses 1 through 11 and 22 through 29, that the scriptures were written for Israel, and to them the oracles of Yahweh were committed. See how the adversary works. So when the Christian, or when Christianity came along, they they translated those scriptures to, to, to have a non-Israelitist approach. But see, what they failed to, to acknowledge with Yahweh, gave it to the, he, he said that Shem would be persuaded to dwell in the tent, or tenth with Shem. Japheth would be uh, persuaded. So Yahweh had set it up for the Gentiles to come in and they were going to be heirs of the same, you know, the same, the same. But see, the man always thinks he can do be better than what Yahweh has, set, has said. He's always got to come in. That's why Yahweh put the man in on the sixth day. Because the man is always trying to put forth his thoughts and his opinions and his ideas. Read. Israel, in turn, was to transmit the message to the other nations that they also might obtain the same promises through faith. See, they were going to obtain the same promises, the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. It was going to be through faith. Mm -hmm. Read. That's Genesis 9, 27, Isaiah 56, 6 through 7, and Ephesians 3, chapter 5 through 6. Definite promises made to Israel and to non-Israelites through Israel have been made to appear of non-effect by religious teachers through spiritualization so that the believer is left without hope of receiving the gracious assurances so plainly delineated in the Holy Scripture. See, that is the, the state and condition of the man now. Without hope. They are without hope because they don't know what the truth is. Mm -hmm. And using these erroneous titles and the erroneous name, they're never going to be, they're never going to get it out of this. Mm -hmm. That's not going to give them what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for, for salvation, if that's what you're really looking for, then you have to do a detailed investigation for yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to go in and look at Lord and God and this erroneous name, Jesus Christ. Yahweh's First, a God is anything worship. And I want 1 Corinthians 8 and 5, I think it is. First Corinthians 8 and 5. For though there that that be 
But don't I'm, there and be start at the first verse. Gods. Start at the first verse. First verse. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. First Corinthians eight and one. Am I not now as touching things offered unto idols? We know that we all have knowledge. Now we all have knowledge. We all have some knowledge. Breathe. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifies. Mm -hmm. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought. He don't know nothing yet as he ought to. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. <laughs> As concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered, offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and that there is none other God but one. So we know that an idol is nothing in the world, but we know that there's only one Elohim, right. one creator of heaven and earth, right. and you have to know what his name is. Read. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth. See, in the world today, you have many gods. See, the children of Israel down here, this was a polytheist, polytheistic society. They were worshiping many, many gods down here. So it's no marvel that now in today's world, it's the same thing going on. Nothing has changed. The world is still duped in darkness, and they're worshiping many idols. But we're declaring and we're saying that there's only one creator of heaven and earth. Right. And he has a name right. and you can know his name. Right. And we are declaring that unto you. <laughs> Read. As there be God's many and Lord's many. See, there's God's many and there's Lord's many. But to us, there is but one Eloah, the father of whom are all things and we for him. And one Savior. There's Yashua only Messiah. one Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Right. By whom are all things, and we by him. So that is what we are declaring. Mm -hmm. Now go go to number four, the sacred names. Okay, let me do the translation. Okay. Okay, Hebrew translation. Some have tried to translate the Bible in what they call a literal translation. But the Hebrew language cannot be literally translated into a classical language. Hebrew is an idiomatic language, and one Hebrew word may have from three to ten different meanings depending on the context. Sometimes it has opposing meanings. In the Bible, whole thoughts, not words, must therefore be translated. Mm -hmm. The sacred names. Another common error among most of the translators. See, this is a common error. Mm -hmm. Common. Right. Great. Another common error among most of the translators is their elimination of heaven's revealed name of the Most High, Yahweh, and the name of his son, Yahshua, the Messiah and substituting the names of the local deities of the nations among whom they dwelt. Psalms 96 and 5. Go ahead and get me that, 96 and 5. Expressly transgressing Yahweh's commandments as given in Exodus 20 and 7 and 23, 13. Psalms 96 and 5. For all the deities of the nations are idols. See, Yahweh said it. Right. He said, all the deities, all the gods of the nations are what? Idols. idols. And what is an idol? Look up the word idol. An image or other material object represent, representing a deity which religious worship is addressed. <coughs> an image of a deity other than Yahweh. See, it's an image. That means it's not the real thing. Mm -hmm. And see, what we have, Yahweh has, we're, we have the real genuine thing. The true creator of heaven and earth has come to us and has called us out of the world. <coughs> the true Elohim, mm -hmm. Yahweh. Free. 1 
for Yahweh, they have substituted Baal, the Babylonian deity, and Adonai, the Canaanitish deity of the Phoenicians, both corresponding to the English word Lord. See, Baal was a god back there, and Yahweh hated him. And he hated him so much that he told them uh, in many of your passages, passages in the Bible, um, there was somebody, I think it was, I can't remember who it was, but he told them that Baal, let me get the scripture. Well, I looked up the, the pronunciation, they called it Baal. So, Baal, Baal. But, Baal means Lord. Mm -hmm. And see, that's what we have reduced Yahweh's name down to is Lord. Mm -hmm. That in no way represents the Father. And the bottom line is He has a name, just like you have a name. Mm -hmm. Everything in this earth plane has a name. We've, we've given a name to everything to identify, mm -hmm. to identify whatever it is. So that is why and everything is going after Yahweh. Why everything has a name? Because He has a name. It's very simple. It's not complex. It's not complex at all. That was Elijah you're talking about. Elijah, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, read. The characteristic appellation of the Most High, Elohim, has been substituted by the Assyrian deity, God, or God in English, and is repudiated by Yahweh in Isaiah 65, 11, which reads as follows. And repudiated means rejected. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what that word means. Great. But ye are they that forsake Yahweh, that forget my holy mountain, and furnish a table for God, and furnish a drink offering to many. No wonder the people of Scotland and some parts of northern England Celebrate their harmony, which in Hebrew means the feast of the God many on New Year's Eve with a fellowship drink for good luck. The name of the son, Yahshua, has been substituted by Jesus, Isus, and Jesus, healing Zeus. Now see the name of the son, see he said he came in his father's name. Mm -hmm. Lord, God, and Jesus is no similarity. There's no relationship here. Uh, give me John 5 and 39. John 5, 39. And we're talking about the sun. We're talking about the door. Read. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. See, you search the scriptures. The whole world is searching those scriptures. Mm -hmm. But Yahweh said that those, the scriptures are sealed. Right. So you can't just go in there and read them and think that you're going to get some understanding out of them. Read. And they are they which testify of me. Because these scriptures are testifying of the Messiah. Right. That's who the scriptures are testifying of. Right. But the world or the, uh, the ministers or whoever pastors think is testifying of them. Or it's got something to do with them. But no, it's got something to do with, it's about Yahshua, the Savior of the world. Read. But ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that ye have not the love of Elohim in you. See, they don't have the love of Elohim in them. Why? Because they are, they are preaching false and erroneous doctrine. And Yahweh is not pleased right. with this. That's right. He is not pleased. Right. Yahweh said he is pleading with mankind. Where is that at? Where he's pleading with these men. He said, repent. You're going to have to change. You're going to have to know for an assurity who your creator is. You're going to have to know his name. That's right. You're going to have to know the truth. You're going to have to know this for your own salvation. It's not for me. It's not for anybody here. It's about you knowing for yourself so that you can know. Read. 
I am Father. come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. See, the Messiah said, He came in His Father's name, and you received Him not. The name of the Father is Yahweh. Mm -hmm. It's not Yah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Yahweh was, when He showed, you know, because see, we overlook these things, but the Tetragrammaton, that's Yahweh. Mm -hmm. The Father's name is Yahweh. And his son came in his father's name. You know, we talk about a contraction. We talk about cannot. And when you contract it, it's can't. Well, this name is a contracted form. Yahweh is salvation. That's what this name means. Yahweh is salvation. Read. I am come in my father's name, and ye receive me not. Let another come in his own name. Him. See, you let another one come in his own name, and then this is a patched up name. You've got three gods here. Mm -hmm. Babylonian, Greek, and um, Hindu, Krishna. So this is just idol gods that they brought together. So the, and, and one thing that Yahweh was telling me, a lot of the problem came because of the uh, Greek scriptures. That had a big influence on um, this right here, you know, like Zeus, because Zeus was a chief sky god. And a lot of the, the myths and stuff that the Greek people had, um, Greek mythology, you know, that's where some of these uh, erroneous names were embedded into the scriptures when they were translating the Bible. Okay, so read. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from Elohim only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. Okay. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. Okay, so Moses wrote of the Messiah. Okay, so go on back to the... Um, finish that up. It's a substitution. Okay. The characteristic appellation of the Most High Elohim has been substituted by the Assyrian deity God, or God in English, and is repudiated by Yahweh in Isaiah 65, 11, which reads as follows. But ye are they that forsake Yahweh, that forget my holy mountain, and furnish a table for God, and furnish a drink offering to me. No wonder the people of Scotland and some parts of northern England celebrate their harmony, which in Hebrew means the feast of the God many on New Year's Eve with the fellowship drink for good luck. The name of the son, Yahshua, has been substituted by Jesus, Isus, and Jesus, healing Zeus. Okay, so now we're talking about the son, Yahshua, and um, Yahweh, you know, the G, J, Jesus Christ. Okay, so the J, we go ahead and look it up. Look that J up. The J did not come into existence until... Um, the 16th century and was used um, 17th century. So that was after the Messiah lived and died and resurrected. That was way after that. So go ahead and read the J. The 10th letter of the alphabet, a Western European medieval development of I, with which it was formerly quite interchangeable in writing. And see, after investigation, we found out that the J is not even, that's a lie. Mm -hmm. We found out that the J was not added to the, it was the last letter of the English alphabet. Mm -hmm. It's not even in the 10th, they put it in the 10th spot. Mm -hmm. Just like uh, over there where Yahweh said they sent out those 10 spies. Mm -hmm. I mean the, the spies, 12 spies and 10 brought back that evil report. And so uh, Yahweh is talking about that. But go ahead about the J. It is pronounced as a consonant in English and often pronounced and often as a Y in other languages as in the Hebrew hallelujah. See in the Hebrew hallelujah because there is no J in the Hebrew language this day. There wasn't one back then and there still isn't one. Mm -hmm. There's no J in the Latin and there's no J in the Greek. Mm -hmm. So if there is no J 
then what was his name right. when he was walking around? Right. That's, right. That's a simple and intelligent That's right. question. That's right. See, Yahweh is intelligence. Mm -hmm. And he has given the man enough intelligence mm -hmm. for them to know their creator. He's, give, he's put that in the man. Because Yahweh said, um, I know I'm running, Acts 17 and 24. Yahweh, Yahweh who, who made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is ruler of heaven and earth, he dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Neither is worship with men's hands as though he needeth anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one man all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth. I want it where he's saying that he... Come down. Okay. So Yahweh who made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is the ruler of heaven and earth, he doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. So that means he's not dwelling in the church of <laughs> God. He's not dwelling in the synagogues. Read and has determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. See, Yahweh has determined the times before appointed. So everything, even down to this second, Yahweh has already determined it. Right. He's determined for you to be sitting here. He's determined, he's determined these things before the foundation of the world. Read. That they should seek him. See, Yahweh put it in the man to seek him if happily they could feel after them. So you, Yahweh, him, read. And find him. And he said you could find him. Though he be not far from every one of us. See, Yahweh is not far from every one of us. And you can find him. You can know him. That's our first aim, is to help you find and know. Right. Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and as he actually exists. So you can know something about your, father, your heavenly father. Read. For in him we live. See, you're going to find out that it is in Yahweh that we live. And move. And that we move. And have our being. And that we have our being. Read. As some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. We are also Yahweh's offspring. So we are, we sprung off from spirit. Mm -hmm. That's where we come from. Okay, go back. Go ahead and read about the, the son. Okay. The substitution of the names. Okay. The, na the name of the son, Yahshua, has been substituted by Jesus, Isis, and Jesus, healing Zeus. Webster says that Zeus is the sky god and is also known as Dios, Latin, Dio, Italian, Dios, Spanish, Deos, Sanskrit, and Zeus, Zeus Soter, meaning Zeus the Savior. Even in the French Bible, they have substituted Deo. Isaiah 65, 11 truly expresses what Yahweh thinks of Christian worship. Get me 65 and 11. Isaiah 65 and 11. Isaiah 65 and 11. But ye are they, but ye are they that forsake Yahweh, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for the deity of fortune, and that furnish a drink offering unto destiny. See, we, the world has forsaken Yahweh. And Yahweh has a controversy with all the inhabitants of the earth. Right. Mm -hmm. Because there is no mercy, mm -hmm. there is no truth, mm -hmm. there is no knowledge of Elohim. And that's why Yahweh, he is demanding that the man repent and that they return back. See, and that's what, what Yahweh has brought to us. He has declared his name. And I'll go ahead and get me Isaiah 4. 
He said the man is destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Isaiah 4. Mm-hmm, I think it's, you can start at 4, Hosea 4. Oh, okay. Four and one. Start four and one. Hosea. Hosea four and one. Hear the word of Yahweh, ye children of Israel. For Yahweh hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth nor mercy, nor knowledge of Elohim in the land. Now you hear the word of Yahweh, <laughs> and you understand that Yahweh has a controversy. He's got a problem with it. He's not pleased with it. So you hear. Read that over again. Hear the word of Yahweh, ye children of Israel. You children of Israel, hear the word of Yahweh this day. For Yahweh hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of Elohim in the land. And there's no knowledge of Elohim in the land. What land? <laughs> if you created this world and your creatures didn't know you in truth, wouldn't you be upset about it? If they were calling you any and everything and telling you, well, it don't matter what you call them, long as he know. No, he wants you to know him. Right. He knows who he is. Do you know? That's why he has a controversy with this land. You see all the things that's going on in this world. And it's because of the iniquity. Read. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and bloodshed toucheth bloodshed. Therefore shall the land mourn, and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Yet let no man strive, nor reprove another, for thy people are as they that strive with the priest. Therefore, ye priests, shall thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Yahweh says his people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. And when you reject knowledge. I will also reject thee. Yahweh will reject you. That thou shalt be no priest to me. You can't be a priest to him. Sin, thou hast forgotten the law of thy Elohim. I will also forget thy children. See, Yahweh, his controversy with these inhabitants is because they have rejected knowledge. They don't want the truth. They don't want it. If you try to give it to them, they have all kind of excuses not to take it. You see, and Yahweh's just playing it out in the world like you're looking at it through this thing with Trump and the president and all of that. No matter how much evidence is being brought against this man to show that he's a liar, that he's a thief, he's a robber, he's all those things, they, they still are trying to uh, uphold hold him in his wrongdoing. See, they don't want the truth. And why not? Because then they'd have to look at themselves. That's why they don't want it. And that's sad when the truth doesn't even matter to you. You'd rather have a lie than to have the truth. All right. Well, Yahweh is slowing me down now, so um, I'm just thankful. And see, what Yahweh has given us is just so magnificent. 
And this gospel is able to change a man. It is able to bring a man from darkness and give you some light and some understanding. But you have to go through the door. You have to go through the truth. You got to go by them through the Messiah. You have to go that way. There's no other way to do this. And I'm thankful to Yahweh for the 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 patience and the repetition. See, we don't want the repetition, but the repetition is necessary. You got to have that repetition, the repeating of it over and over and over until whose right it is to sit on the throne. You got to you got to have it. Because in that repetition, Yahweh is building up and tearing down. Right. He's building up and tearing down. Mm -hmm. he's, built, he's tearing down those old concepts and opinions and ideas and the wrong stuff that we had growing up in this world. He's, he's throwing it down. And then he's building the truth in you. He's building these facts and this proof. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing that it's Yahweh. And he's, I mean, it's a beautiful thing. If Yahweh just slows you down and Unless you just, I'm telling you, mm -hmm. woo, it's giving me chills right now. Because mm -hmm. it's so pretty. Mm -hmm. And then you come to, you like, Yahweh, I'm not, I'm not worthy. <laughs> None of us are. Right. But it's the mercy and the grace that Yahweh has had for his son. And for you to know that he, from before the foundation of the world, that he has given you a seed. Last okay, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> the substitution of the names of Yahweh and Yahshua by the names of the pagan deities of the nations has brought immeasurable harm. Immeasurable harm. Thank you, because that was in my mind. Mm -hmm. So the substitution of Yahweh's name, mm -hmm. it's taken away your power. Mm -hmm. It's taken away your ability to truly believe in a creator mm -hmm. that really and actually exists. Mm -hmm. That's what this has done. Mm -hmm. See, that's irreparable harm if you're not rescued from that. Right. Mm -hmm. There's no way your soul can be revived mm -hmm. or can recover. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the truth, mm -hmm. and every time the world says it doesn't matter, yes, it does. It yes, it does. Right. Have a conversation with somebody mm -hmm. and see if they know any, see what they know. Mm -hmm. Ask questions like we were talking about. Ask questions. Mm -hmm. Now, don't be so quick to tell them. Let them tell you what they know. Mm -hmm. And you'll find out they don't know much. Right. So, I'm telling you, we have come to something so great mm -hmm. and so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And when you get in there, just like, and I love that, the, the go through the door and the light, the food and the intercession in the holy place. Hey, now, when you, man, I'm telling you. See, what Yahweh has given us, family. Just be grateful and thankful. And if you don't know or if you don't understand, just ask Yahweh to reveal it to you. It might not come when you're when you think it should, but it's going to be on time. That's right. And when you commit it to him and go on, Yahweh will bring it back to you and you'll be like, oh, okay. But always have your eye open and waiting and looking for him. No matter what the situation is, whether it looks negative or positive, keep your eye on Yahweh. And see, that's how Yahweh kept me from the beginning. Through all the controversies, through all the whatever, Yahweh said, keep your eye on me. And I'm not talking about outside of myself. I'm talking about right there within. When I didn't understand, when I was confused, I, Yahweh said, well, you be still and you wait. You don't go take off. Just wait. Don't try to put your imagination on it or try to figure it out. You wait on Yahweh. Because Yahshua, he's a quickening spirit. He's going to quicken your understanding. 
meaning you gonna you don't understand and then he's gonna and and what's beautiful he uses the types and the shadows that's how you're led to it because Romans 1 19 and 20 says he takes the natural things to understand the spiritual things so while Yahweh is laying these these types and shadows down it seems like it's not it doesn't mean anything but you just keep on and, and just keep on listening to it and keep on because eventually you're going to see how those types and shadow is going to give you some reality they're going to give you some reality and then you're going to know oh that's what that was talking about so I'm, I'm, I just hope somebody has gotten something out of what I said and all praises and honor go on to Yahweh through his son Yahshua the Messiah Next speaker will be Dr. Carla Carter. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, thankfully, I have a testimony of Yahweh. Uh, feels like it's been a while since I've physically been up. Oh, I've enjoyed the words of the previous speaker this morning. And I pray that y'all will continue, continues in the light. And we can build a house and go home. Um, a couple of things that um, were brought out in the scripture lesson and the first speaker hit on it. There's only one way, and that's fair, and that's comfort. There's peace in that. Why do I say that? Because if it was a whole bunch of different ways, you'd be confused. You know what I'm saying? And so Yahweh is just, and so it's only one way that you can actually come to it, right? Um, get Acts 17, where we were. I think the last place where she left off was we are also his offspring. Right. Okay. Uh, Acts 17, mm -hmm. we'll start at 24th again or? Mm -mm. Where she left 28. off at. Mm -hmm. For in him we live and move and have our being. Now, this is the Apostle Saul telling them that in Yahweh, we live, we move, we have our being. Why is that important to tell them that? Because you have to understand what Yahweh is. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you understand that in, in Him we live, move, and have our being, then you have to understand the ever presence of Yahweh. You can't escape Him. You can't. Exactly. Go ahead, read. As some of your own poets have said, mm -hmm. for we are also His offspring. Not only are we abiding in Him, but that's who we are. That's where we come from. Mm -hmm. Read. For as much then as we are the offspring of Yahweh, mm -hmm. we ought not to think that gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device can be like the Most High. Read. And the times of this ignorance, Yahweh winked at. Now there was a time when Yahweh, uh, Yahweh knew he didn't make it known to the man yet, so he winked at that ignorance. Mm -hmm. He's the one that put him in that ignorance. Right. Read. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. But now Yahweh has commanded all men everywhere to repent or to change. Right. Read. Because he hath appointed a day mm -hmm. in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. That's the reason why, because Yahweh has ordained a day that he's going to judge the entire world in righteousness by that man that he ordained, mm -hmm. read, whereof he hath given proof unto all men in that he raised him from the dead. And so Yahweh didn't leave it up to the man. He gave the man proof right. that he raised him from the dead, right. right? And so this way that Yahweh made for the man to come to him 
because that's where the man came from. This is the gospel of reconciliation, reconciling you to what? Back to the consciousness that you are Yahweh. Right. But the only way you could do that is through the Son. So it goes hand in hand. That's why it was a great mystery. Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27. We're going to get back to this scripture lesson right here. This scripture right here. Oh, let's slow down. <clears throat> Matthew eleven twenty seven. Yep. And turning to his disciples, he said. Now this is Joshua turning to his disciples. He said what? All things are delivered unto me of my father. Some things. No, all. Everything. All things. All means all, right? Mm -hmm. All things are delivered to me, the son, Joshua. <laughs> Of my father. Of my father Yahweh. Read. And no man knoweth the son, but the father, neither knoweth any man the father. Wait a minute, let's slow this down. All things were delivered unto me, Yahshua the son, by my father Yahweh. When would that when did that happen? When was that? Was it when he manifested in the flesh? No. Or was it when he was in the in the lawns of the Virgin Mary? When was that then? Before the world ever was. When Yahweh decided within himself right. to create. The conception of the Messiah was done here. Right. Uh, everything that was that was going to be brought forth, Yahweh worked all of it out here. Right. And then when he decided to bring it forth, he stepped into this shape and form as Elohim and the Messiah came up with him. That was the first thing he conceived. Mm -hmm. So if he conceived him then, at one point, he wasn't Yahshua before he conceived him as Yahshua. Where is he, he going to bring Yahshua from? What substance or what spirit is he going to come from? Other than himself. So when Yahweh stepped into the shape and form, he stepped into the shape and form as a father, as a son, and as the Holy Spirit right here. Now, from this state, everything else was to be carried out. He went out to create business here. Because there was no more need for him to do anything back here because he'd already, he delivered all things to the sun for the sun to carry out. Do you see what I'm saying? Let's slow, let's slow this down now. But all of this, this was in part. This was still abiding in Yahweh. We live, move, and have our being in what, what the natural things to understand the spiritual then, what are you talking about? What, what's one of the examples that Yahweh gave us then? Let's look at David and Solomon. Right? Now David was the king that Yahweh chose. Say Yahweh chose a man after his own heart, which was David. Right? Right. Now, David had a desire to build a house for Yahweh. Right? But Yahweh said that David's hands were too bloody. I thought that meant he killed too many people or whatever. That's not what that meant when you go back and read it. What that meant was he had so much war going on on all sides, he wouldn't have had time to build the temple because he would have been having to fight off all these. Remember in Nehemiah, how they had to have swords in one hand and the uh, 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 building uh, supplies in another hand? David couldn't. This house was too great. You, you ain't got time to be warring with people trying to build this house. And on top of that, all those that Yahweh had set up to give those things to Solomon from to build it with, they weren't going to give it to David because David had too many enemies, right? So what did Yahweh do? Yahweh made David to understand that pattern of the temple by move, moving his hand over his body. And David received the pattern. But David couldn't do nothing with the pattern himself. He had to pass the pattern down to his son Solomon. Solomon had to be the one to build the temple. But he also told Solomon what? He said, look, I remember this man, Shemi, Shema, however you say his name, cursed me when I was running for my son, Absalom. And I told him that I would let him live. But don't you, you know what to do. Don't let his head go down to the grave without blood. You handle him. I ain't going to tell you what to do, but you know what to do. And that's just another man that I had issues with. You know what to do. You handle him. Also, Joab who was my right-hand man. He turned on me and went after my son Absalom. You know what to do. Don't let his head go down to the grave without blood. Solomon said, yes, sir. Solomon had to cast judgment 
of his father on those that his father gave him to cast it to. But he also said, now this one over here, they did good to me. Right. So you always be good to this one over here. Right. What are you showing then, Yahweh? Mm -hmm. I'm sure the son have to do everything that I'm telling him to do. But the son has a role to play in it too, though, right? Because at the end of the day, what was the name of this temple? Solomon. It was called Solomon's Temple. Mm -hmm. But he was living in the city of David. Mm -hmm. right. He was abiding within the Father. Don't play with me with this now. Look, let me tell y'all something. Yahweh will always give you witnesses. And if he don't, sit down until he do. That's right. <laughs> the, the, the thing I had read last time I was up. Satan is looking to separate the sons. He's pulling out all stops to catch you up with this little word over here. Oh, well, that ain't right. Uh-uh, uh-uh. No, they said this. Well, they said that. YouTube has messed us up. Yeah. It has messed us up. <laughs> it's help, but it's hurt. But it's all for a purpose. Anyway, I don't even, let me, I don't even want to go there. So, the whole thing is this. 1127 of Matthew. Go ahead and read it for me. So I can and turning to his disciples, he said, All things are delivered unto me of my Father. Right. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Nobody knows who the Son is but the Father. Mm. Read. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Don't nobody even know who the Father is but the Son. And he to whom are the, who going to reveal the father? The son. So you got to have a son. But you can't have a son without having a father. You got to have both of them. Right. You got to have both because they are one and the same. That's what the Messiah said in the scripture lesson. Right. Me and my father are one accord. Or accord means one. Right. We are in accord. That means we are one. Agreed. Right? So then... If don't nobody know who the father is but the son, don't nobody know who the son is but the father, then Yahweh has a, he has a great work to do. If eternal life is to know that Yahweh, you are the only true El and you are also Yahshua Messiah whom thou hast sent, then Yahweh, you got to do something. Because you're going to judge the whole world in righteousness by that man that you ordained. So we have to know who he is, don't we? All right. So this is how Yahweh set it up. We already went over the name. Who slow it down. Yahweh is telling his story through this migratory trek as well. This is also a pattern, right? Now, he came to a man named Abram in the land of Canaan. Canaan is typifying heaven. Okay? And then we're coming back up. This is also typifying heaven. We just read that it's a hieroglyphic language, isn't it? How, how did I say it right? You know what I'm trying to say? Idiomatic language. It has a whole bunch of different meanings. So, but right now for this principle, this is typifying heaven. Yahweh came to him and gave him a promise that because he had a desire for a son. What are you talking about, Yahweh? I'm telling my purpose. How do we know that that's what Yahweh wanted? Because that's what Abraham wanted. And then that's what Yahweh did. He brought his son up with him. That was the first thing he conceived because that's what he wanted. Right? But then he said, I'm going to multiply your seed. Why are you doing that, Yahweh? Because I wanted many sons. Right. I'm telling my story through Abraham. So he, he promised him that he was going to give him a seed, right? He said, I'm going to multiply your seed as the sands of the sea and as the stars of heaven, but know for sure. Don't have no doubts about it. No matter what they do, they can kick, scream, holler. They're going to have to go down into a land and it's going to be peaches and cream. No potatoes. Well, why you expect to have peaches and cream? You're going to have to go into a land and be placed in abundance for a period of time. For a period of time, though. Right. Not forever. So that's comfort in knowing that then. That's knowledge. That knowledge then, when you're, going, when you're down in it, wisdom should kick in at some point and say, you know what, it's a time where Yahweh got set for me to come out. Let me look for the pattern then. Yes. That's wisdom. Wisdom and knowledge show what? Stability. It's going to stabilize you now. So then, he said, no, for sure, they're going to have to go into a land that's not theirs. We placed into bondage for how long? He even told them how long that was going to be in bondage. If you knew the pattern, you could know. You would know how to rule your own. You know what's got going on, when it's going to happen and everything. You just look for the pattern. That's how A.C. Kingdom one predicted nothing. He, he was given the pattern. Yahweh used the pattern that he had because Yahweh knows what he had set up. But anyway, let's keep going. So he said... They had to come down, right? Mm -hmm. Be placed in abundance for a period of time after which Yahweh was going to be the one to deliver them out and give them this land, right? Mm -hmm. Now, 
back here, before Yahweh even gave Abraham a son, there was a famine in the land of Canaan. Abraham had to go down into Egypt. Right? Mm -hmm. He told Sarah, his wife, look, you're a beautiful woman, honey. Tell them that I'm your sister so they wouldn't kill me. I mean, your brother. Sister, ooh. We didn't have no chance of transgenders back then. Anyway, tell them that I'm your brother so that they won't kill me. Because they're going to see you and think you're so beautiful, they're going to take you and try to kill me if I'm your husband. So she said, okay, I'll do that. It looked like Abraham lied, didn't it? But that's not what happened, because that really was his sister. That was the daughter of his father, but it wasn't the daughter of his mother. It was his half-sister. So they went down into Egypt, and they saw how beautiful she was, and it happened just like he thought it would happen. Pharaoh took him, took her to be his wife. What did Yahweh do? He plagued Egypt for Sarah, Abram's wife. And they said, oh, uh-uh, get, get all your substance, <laughs> your cattle, your everything, and you get out of here. He's telling his story through Abraham, right? So Abraham had to come back up out of Egypt and go back into Canaan land again, right? Round trip. So Abraham took the round trip. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Then Abraham had Isaac, and in the time of Isaac, there was also a famine in the land of Canaan when Isaac was born, uh, uh, going on in Canaan, right? Mm -hmm. But Yahweh told him, make sure you do not go into Egypt. Right. You go into the land of Gerar with Abimelech and them, because Abraham, Abraham had to do that too. He went in the land of Abimelech too. He was in Gerar with Abimelech. They took Sarah then too. <laughs> Abraham had to go through all those things first before he had his son. So when his son came on the scene, he was going to have to do the same thing that the father did. You follow what I'm saying? So, so then Isaac had to go into the land of Gerar. And he told them, told Rebecca, his wife, look, you, you beautiful. <laughs> Tell them that you my sister so they won't try to kill me for you. <laughs> Same thing that Abraham did when he was in Gerar. And Abimelech saw them quoting co co one day. How you say quoting? Courting. Old people say quoting, courting. <laughs> they was flirting with each other. They was whatever. Okay, y'all get what I'm saying. Yeah. And so Abimelech said, oh, no, surely this is your wife. What is this that you have brought up? On? That, that's not a light thing. One of these men, we could have laid with her or anything thinking that she was a free woman and you would have brought sin on us. What are you doing? Wasn't no law given yet. Right. Yahweh didn't say thou should not commit adultery yet from the mountain. <laughs> but it was already known. The man already knew mm -hmm. what was right or wrong. That's right. Okay. From the mouth. So then after Isaac, so he told y'all gonna get up out of here now. So after Isaac had Jacob and Esau, there was another famine in the land too, right? And Jacob had to come down mm -hmm. in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Jacob was the only one that was placed in bondage down here though. When Abraham came, he wasn't bound down to nothing. What is that talking about? Abraham is talking to talking about Yahweh in his pure spirit state. He saw the whole thing out from start to finish before he stepped into shape and form as the son. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. In this state, mm -hmm. right. he didn't have and he didn't have to go through the whole process like that because he had already done it here. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? Right. So Isaac didn't have to come down. This is Isaac. Isaac didn't have to come down into Egypt. But now when he manifested in the flesh. Mm -hmm. He had to come down and be bound down by the law and the prophets. And he could not come up out of that land without blood. Because the only way they could come up out of Egypt was by the blood of the lamb. And you had to have four points of blood. I'm Miranda Renee. I'm Miranda Renee. I didn't mean to beat the short. I'm sorry. Four points of blood on this door mm -hmm. is the only way they was able to come up out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Then they had to come to some water, didn't they? Mm -hmm. The cloud, they had to be led by the cloud, which was spirit, right? They had to come into the wilderness for 40 years. And so when he came manifesting in the flesh, you had to have four points of blood here too, right? Mm -hmm. They pierced him inside. Out for came what? Blood and water. And he yielded the spirit and he teared the earth plane for how many days before he ascended? Forty, 40 days. You got to stop playing with Yahweh because look, let me tell you something with this pattern right here. <laughs> You're talking about when you get to the door, because he is the door. They had to put the blood on this door. He is the door, so the blood had to be on this door, too. Now, before you can come into this door that we talk, had read in the scripture lesson, why am I getting loud? <laughs> Ooh. So you here. Before, like we had read in the scripture lesson, you had to come 
by the door. The only way you can get in is come by coming through the door. And it's only one door. How many doors was it in the ark? One. Oh, because you was already thinking it. Look, Yahweh does not change. That's why it's so easy to follow him. But that's why it has to be repeated over and over again because you always going to miss something. Because it's so good. You be chewing on one thing. Something else be done said. You can't even catch that. Like, God, dog, how do you get none of that? Because I was still chewing on this. That's why you got to keep repeating it. So then... The Messiah said, I am the door. Mm -hmm. He said, I am the way, mm -hmm. the truth, mm -hmm. and the life. Mm -hmm. No man comes to the Father but by me. Right. If you come any other way, you are a thief and a robber. What are you stealing then? Mm -hmm. What are you stealing when you come that way? Mm -hmm. Come any other way? Mm -hmm. You stealing men's souls. Mm -hmm. That's what's at stake. Girl. So when they come to this door, because this is a pattern. When, before they can even enter into this door to get to this light, food, and intercession, how, what the high priest had to do first? He, you had to have blood, water, spirit for it before you could even get to the door. You can't get to, look, he couldn't, he couldn't miss not one step. Mm -hmm. His steps were ordered. By mm -hmm. Right? And so the only way you could even come to the door mm -hmm. is by blood, water, spirit. Mm -hmm. That's the only way you can come to it. It seems like it's so simple. It seems like it's so simple. Okay, everybody know blood, water, spirit, whatever. Okay, okay. Evidently not. When you're saying all that, you ain't seen the power of it. Because he said the gospel is the power of Yahweh unto salvation to save those that believe it. If you don't believe it, it's foolishness to you. It's foolishness to keep on saying blood, water, spirit, 40. Blood, water, spirit, 40. Death, burial, resurrection. It's foolishness unto you. But unto me, it's safe. And it's obedience. Right? right? Now, so this is what Yahweh said. Uh, this is what Yahweh was showing me with this whole thing. Now, it's been a lot of controversy since. I ain't going to say since we've been saying it. Since we've had YouTube. Because we've been saying it from the beginning that you are Yahweh. Mm -hmm. It ain't never stopped being preached over here on this side. Right. That you are Yahweh. It's been some controversy when, people, when we say that. Mm -hmm. And like it was said in Albuquerque by somebody not even in our class. That the reason why that's such a problem mm -hmm. is because people are scared they're gonna have to clean up. Give me first, uh, not first, John three sixteen, and read it all the way down. This is why they're scared to change. Ooh, 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 ooh. Calm down, calm down. Calm John three sixteen. For Yahweh mm -hmm. so loved the world. Yahweh so loved the the the, the, the ed on that right. That's past tense. Mm -hmm. That's past tense. Mm -hmm. Yahweh loved oh, the world. Right. Okay. At one time he did love the world. Why is that? Because his son was in the world. But then the Messiah said, "I'm no longer in the world." And so then he said, since I'm no longer in the world, come out of her, my people. Mm -hmm. Be not partaker of her sins. And Yahweh said, don't love the world, neither the things that are in it. Mm -hmm. Why you change your mind, Yahweh? Because they rejected me. Mm -hmm. I ain't say they rejected the son. They rejected me because when you reject the son, you reject me. And when you reject Yahweh, you reject the son because they are one and the same. So cut all this out now. Read. For Yahweh so loved the world uh -huh. that he gave his only begotten son uh -huh. that whosoever believeth in him should not perish right. but have everlasting life. Whosoever believe in him, in him, not on him, right. believe in him. That's right. These little small little words. I'm telling you, Yahweh is tight. That's right. Whosoever believe in him, because that means some whosoever that don't believe in him, okay. would have everlasting life. Read. For Yahweh sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, uh -huh. but that the world through him might be saved. That the world through him might be saved. Read. He that believeth on him is not condemned. So why did Yahweh send the Messiah into the world? To save, them. to save those that Yahweh that He had set up from the beginning to save. Him might be saved. So then, it's a complete, it's a round circle, it's a completeness. You can't have one without the other. Yahweh's purpose wouldn't be complete without the Messiah. The Messiah's mission can be complete without Him. Who, what, who, who did He talk to? Who did He talk about? Every time he healed somebody, he always gave glory to the Father. Let this mind be in you. That's right. That's in Yahshua the Messiah. So if he gave glory to the Father, give glory to the Father through the Son. Because at the end of the day, who was the Father talking about back in the Law and the Prophets? The Son. He said, look, search 
the scriptures. Because in them, you think you have eternal life, but they're talking about who? Me. The they're talking about the son. Because read Hebrews, the first chapter from me real quick. I'm all over the place, but we're going to come back to it. We're going to get, <laughs> we get where we're going this morning. We're going to get there. Mm. Hebrews 1 and 1. Elohim, who at sundry times and in various manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Hold on. Who spoke? Yahweh. Elohim, mm -hmm. who at sundry times and various manners, mm -hmm. in all kind of different manners, spoke mm -hmm. to who? The fathers by the prophets. By the prophets. So it was Elohim in the prophets speaking mm -hmm. about the son. Because he said that they was talking about the son. Mm -hmm. That's all, everything written in law and the prophets was all talking about Yahshua the Messiah. And that was Yahweh Elohim in them talking about his son. Because nobody knew who the son was but the father. Right. Right. Keep reading. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. But in these last days, who spoke to us by his son? Elohim. It's him in the son. It's him as the son. It's the same one. Why, Yahweh, please do it to me. Calm me down. Read. Whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he hath ordained the ages. Now, he appointed the Messiah heir of all things. That's what Abraham was looking for a son for. He said, Yahweh, I don't have nobody to leave this inheritance to. <laughs> And this Eleazar of Damascus, he gonna, he, gonna, he gonna get everything I got. Y'all would say, no, honey. Steward. No, 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 no. <laughs> this shall not be thine heir. There shall come forth one out of thy own bowels. He shall be thine heir. He's telling his story through Abraham. That's why you gotta always go back and talk about Abraham. Because that's how you know what Yahweh's doing even now. It's so simple when you know the story. That's why you have to have the foundation, though. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Yahweh appointed the Messiah heir over all things. So he's taking care of his father's business. So whatever the Messiah is doing, he's doing Yahweh's business. Mm -hmm. And so you don't discount him. Mm -hmm. And whatever, Yah whatever Yahweh is doing, because Yahweh is ruler of heaven and earth. It's a Yahweh <laughs> who made the world and all things that are in it, including Yahshua the Messiah. Mm hmm. <laughs> hmm. It's ruler of heaven and, and earth. Mm -hmm. So you don't discount the king either. That's right. Because you wouldn't have a Messiah without Yahweh. That's right. Right? right. And Yahweh's purpose wouldn't be complete without the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So stop being foolish mm -hmm. and talking crazy. Mm -hmm. It's not about Yahweh. It's about Yahshua. It's not about Yahshua. It's about Yahweh. Who the, who the hell? Who, who are they? Mm -hmm. Is it not the same one? Right. right. Don't let Satan keep on. Pay, look, he playing tricks with you, honey, because eternal life is to know that he's the same one. Right. So when you talk like that, you separating them. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't do that. Yahweh said, mm -hmm. no man knew who the son was but the father. Nobody knew who the father was but the son. Right. But the son is the one that has to reveal the father right. to you in you. Right. Because this is heaven. Who had to take them over? Was it Moses or Aaron? Yahshua, the son, had to take them over to meet the father. And everything that was here, this smaller one, had to enter back on into the greater one. This is Elohim. This is Yahshua. This is the bosom of the father. That's right. Right here. There is no bosom back here. Show what it looked like, what the bosom looked like back here when you can't see anything. Right. There is no description. <sighs> Go back to where we were a minute ago. I don't even know where we was, but help me. Go back to John 3. All right. Where were we? 3. John 3. 3, 16, 17, wherever we at. John 3, 17. Uh -huh. for, the, for Yahweh sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, right. but that the world through him might be saved. Uh huh. He that believeth on him is not condemned, mm -hmm. but he that believeth not is condemned already, uh -huh. because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of Yahweh. Because you haven't believed in the name of the only begotten Son of Yahweh. And what is his name? Yahweh is salvation. Yahweh is salvation, but for the purpose of Yah for Yahweh's purpose, you have to say Yahshua. Yahshua. Mm -hmm. Because that's what he said. He told the angel he was going to name him Yahshua. He didn't say he was going to name him Yahweh of salvation. He said, I'm going to name him Yahshua. Right. And he told him what the meaning of Yahshua was so you wouldn't get it twisted thinking they have two different names. Right. They were different. But his name is Yahshua. Right. Mm -hmm. Yahweh 
as a savior is Yahshua. Yahweh as the Holy Spirit is Yahshua. That's his name. And because of Yahweh himself, when he had to, took on the, uh, the body of Yahshua, the son of Nun, when they got ready to cross over here, and Michael, the archangel that he created, told him to take his shoes off his feet and bow down. He bowed down to what he created because he was going according to his own purpose. He obeyed his own purpose. And Joshua took his shoes off his feet and he bowed down to Michael, the archangel that he created. Because Michael would have done what he was supposed to do. Had he not. Because even here, he had to obey all the way to death. All the way. They spit on him. Satan wasn't lying when he said you can you can make these stones turn into bread. Mm -hmm. That was true. That's right. But it wasn't according to Yahweh's purpose. Right. Just like back here, it was true. They would have had knowledge of good and evil. They would have been just like Elohim knowing good and evil. But that wasn't what Yahweh told them to do. So he had to obey all the way unto death. He had to cover everything that was written of him. He could not go outside. He was bound down by the law and the prophets. That's why Joe, um, Jacob, Israel, they had to be placed in bondage for a period of time. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Because Messiah had to be bound down. Okay, so keep reading where you are. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but mm -hmm. he that believeth not is condemned already, mm -hmm. because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world. This is the condemnation. Right. That light is is come, right. not is coming, right. is come yes. in the world. Right. When was that written? Mm -hmm. That was written while he was walking around. I mean, it wasn't written when he was walking around, but that was talking about before he took off the body. Mm -hmm. Light is coming to the world. Read. <laughs> And men loved darkness rather than light. Men loved darkness rather than light, read. Because their deeds were evil. Because their deeds were evil, read. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, mm -hmm. neither cometh to the light, right. lest his deeds should be reproved. Lest his deeds should be reproved. So when you say you're Yahweh, you just don't want to come to it because you know you got to clean up. Because yeah. you can't be doing all the things you're doing. And being Yahweh. That's why I so I oh, know I can't be Yahweh because I done did this, I done did that, I done lied, I done cheated, I done da 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 da. But you got to come to the light or the understanding of how that works. So when you say you are Yahweh, it's good to say that because you have to say that. You have to tell the people who they are. Because in Hebrews it said if they had been mindful of that country, they would have been able to return to that country. So you have to be mindful of who you are so you can return to that consciousness. But the only way you could do it is through death, burial, resurrection. Blood, water, spirit, 40. How? What you mean? Because Yahweh said the gospel is the only power unto salvation. You got a lot of different powers, but the gospel is the only one unto salvation. That's the only one. And what is the gospel? It ain't, it ain't but one gospel, right? That's what Paul said, right? Because right. we get, sometimes we look at it because we say the, uh, the gospel of the kingdom or the gospel of the Messiah. It was the same thing. So when the Messiah was walking around, what was he preaching? He was talking about his own death, his own burial, his own... He was telling them, look, I must go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you could be there too. I, when he took Peter, James, and John up and he, uh, he was talking to Moses and Elijah, what was he talking to them about? His death. That's all he preached was his death because it said that, look... Abraham prayed to see my day. He saw it and was glad. And it said the gospel was preached unto Abraham, didn't it? That's why when he was told to offer up Isaac, he didn't have a problem with that because he knew that Yahweh was able to raise him from the dead. How do you know that, Abraham? Because I saw Yahweh raise the Messiah from the dead. That's the gospel that was preached unto Abraham when he had the vision. So the gospel is the same thing. It's a death, burial, resurrection. It's not just death, though. It's how he died. And was buried and ra rose again the third day according to what? The scriptures. So you have to go back to the scriptures to see how it was done. Because the scriptures were talking about him. So when he come in, you were, they were looking for him. It said they were looking for him all their lifetime. All their lifetime they were looking for him because Yahweh had wrote of him. And so when he came in, when he came in, he opened up the book of Isaiah and read it. Mm -hmm. He said, now, now this scripture is fulfilled, right. what was written of me. And then he went on and did what he was going to do. Right? So then, 
everything that Yahshua was doing, he was declaring the Father unto them. Mm -hmm. Everything he did, every healing, every time he fulfilled something, he fulfilled what Yahweh had written of him. That was him declaring the Father to them. Mm -hmm. So much so, Thomas said, look, you talking about the Father so much. Where he at? Show us the Father. <laughs> that it suffice us. <laughs> Have I been so long time with you, Philip? Have you not seen me? Because when you see me, you see the Father. Mm -hmm. I got greater witnesses than that of John. Mm -hmm. John bore witness to him because Yahweh told John what to look for. Because had, Yahweh had to tell him what to look for. Because nobody knew who the son was but the Father. So John, I need you to go start baptizing these Jews in the River Jordan. Mm -hmm. Look for the one that when you see the spirit descend on him in the form of a dove, that's my son. And you declare my son to them. And so when he was going baptizing those Jews, they was having to confess their sins. They were confessing that they were dead because the wages of sin is what? Death. death. They were confessing that they were dead. So they were being baptized unto death here, right? So he would baptize and bury those dead Jews in that water. And so they were baptized unto the death, right? When the Messiah came to John, he said, I don't have, I don't have no sins. John said, whoo. <laughs> And I, hear I need to be baptized of you. And you coming to me? Permitted to be so now, John. It becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. What are you talking about? That's what Yahweh talked about in the 17th chapter of Acts. He's going to judge the whole world in righteousness by that man. So he had to carry these things out. So he had to fulfill water baptism. So now when you do it now, that's a sin. That's unto death. You're still saying that you've been baptized into his death. Mm -hmm. And he the rose. Right. Exactly. He's not dead. So why are you being baptized then? Just foolishness. So then John goes ahead and baptizes him in the water, right? Mm -hmm. Then, when he resurrects off that, out of that water, and that water rolls off his earthly body, what are you doing, Messiah? I'm fulfilling everything. I'm fulfilling water baptism. I'm fulfilling the, the third day of the creation. I'm fulfilling everything. Because when the dry land, when the uh, water rolled back and the dry land appeared, that's right. And the seed of vegetation went on into fruition. That dry earth appeared. You got to see how the, the the water rolled off him. And that dry earthly body appeared. And then the seed. This was the seed that was promised unto Abraham. The seed of vegetation went on into fruition in his ministry. That's when he went on into his ministry. His fruition, right? For three and a half years. But he was he was out tempted. He was tested in the wilderness for how many days? Big forty days. You, boy, look so simple a child could understand it. So simple. I was almost in tears the other night. Because we always work with the kids all the time, whatever. So we was working with him the other night. And I was like, get up because you ain't been up in a while. Show me what you know about Adam and all that. So he went through Adam, went through Noah, probably no more than some of us know. Went through uh, Adam, Noah, and all them. So we was, I said, so Mike was saying, um, he picked out, the, he showed the blood, water spirit. He could tell you what the blood on your head mean and everything. Picked up Noah, having the blood on his head, put the blood on the people's head because Noah warned the people and all that. We got to Adam because we hadn't we had worked with him on Adam yet. So I said, well, you know, the blood is when Adam died and went to all four corners of the earth. Where's the water at? So since we hadn't worked with him on it yet, Mike was going to try to give him a hint. I said, uh-uh, uh-uh, don't say nothing. So he looked, he said, the sweat. He was sweating. That's the water. That's the water. I said, boy, you better get it. I'm talking about when I say I was, I said, and what was the spirit then? What was the spirit then? Look, when I tell you the angel, the angel, I said, now how many days was they in the garden? Well, it's got to be 40 because it's always a 40. I said, that's what I'm talking about. And we just, so simple, a child could understand it. Had never heard it before. But because of the pattern, the principle, the line upon line, precept upon precept, even a child can understand it. So you better keep it simple. That's right. That's right. Because that's what Yahweh said we have to do. Because the only way you can come to it is by blood, water, spirit, for the death, burial, resurrection. Yes. Yahweh or Yahshua in you is what takes you on higher into those deep things, those things that you can't even utter sometimes. Because even when you try to get on the floor and try to bring them out, it won't even come out like you're supposed to, like Yahweh showed it to you, because that's for you. I remember a long time, I learned that a long time ago. Yahweh showed me something that was so beautiful, and I can't remember what it was to this day. And Yahweh told me through my dad, like, look, when Yahweh reveals certain things to you, sometimes it's for you. 
and then he'll show you what you're supposed to give to the body. Right. I tried to get into it. I'm to my stumble, bumbled all over. I was so ashamed and embarrassed because I couldn't. I'm to my. Mm. It was like I was lying. Y'all, it didn't show me nothing. Is what it looked like, but I know he did. I know he did. It just won't come out right, and he took it from me. Mm. Took it from me. Hadn't brought it back to me yet. Hadn't brought it back to me yet. So I had to learn. Mm -hmm. In this setting, because we do have so many different levels of understanding, you have to keep it simple. But to keep the simple part of it is every time it's gone over, Yahweh elevates you even higher and higher and higher on the same simplicity, the same principles. I love when Uncle Eugene get up. Because every time he get up, he finna go through the migratory trek, and I see something different every time. I'm talking about beautiful principles. It, look, it ain't nothing but building a house. It's all right. We, gonna, that's, we got the walls up now, so it's going to take it on home. Put the roof on this mug and go on home. So then, <laughs> moving. Where we at reading? Go ahead and read, because I think I'm reading something. We were John 3. Oh, because their deeds were evil. That's, that's why we won't come to. Okay. Mm -hmm. So back to, um, we had Matthew eleven twenty seven. No man know who the father is but the son. Da, 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 da. All right. So back to the um, migratory track. So when he gave Abraham this promise that he was going to give him Isaac, and we do know that he did make good on that promise, but what did he do, though? He waited till y'all, till Abraham couldn't even have a seed. Abraham and Sarah couldn't even have any children. Sarah was barren anyway. Mm -hmm. But he even waited till even when she couldn't even have any children, when she didn't even have a menstrual cycle no more. Impossible. Mm -hmm. Impossible. Mm -hmm. And so then he gave her the seed. But before that, I take that back. So before that, he went to um, Abram and told he was going to give him a seed. So Sarah, mm -hmm. being impatient, she said, look, take Hagar, my bondwoman, and have a seed for me by her. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And so he did that. He obeyed what his wife said. Mm -hmm. He had a, a child by Hagar which was Ishmael. But when she was pregnant, she began to mock Sarah, saying, I, I, look, look, I, I'm having a baby and you're not having a baby. I, 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 I. And Sarah got pissed off about it. Look at what you've done, this outrageous thing that you have done, Abraham. <laughs> you the one told me to, what? Y'all pulled me in, bless y'all heart. I know we do it to y'all, I know we do. I know we do. We wouldn't tell, told y'all to do something, then y'all do it, it'd be messed up, then we blame you for it, right? It's in the scriptures, we got to, we ain't got no choice. <laughs> anyway, so stop complaining about it. So then, <laughs> got one in, didn't I? Anyway, <laughs> so then he said, well, well, she's in your hand, do with it whatever you want to do to her, so she, Beat her up a little bit. And she took off running. So Hagar, hey oh. <laughs> so the angel came and told her, look, go back and submit yourself unto Sarah. Because Yahweh has heard your cry. And he's going to be a prince. Yahweh's going to make Ishmael a prince. Not because of you, Hagar. But because of Abraham. Mm -hmm. And how many princes came from Ishmael? Twelve. Twelve princes came from Ishmael. Why did it have to be twelve? Mm -hmm. You know what that's talking about? So the Ishmaelites, they didn't leave Canaan land. They still were in Canaan land. That's talking about those angels that kept their, fir their first estate, right? But then you have 12 sons of Jacob, right? Mm -hmm. Which had to come down in the flesh. Mm -hmm. So when you have those 24 over there in Revelations, the, those, the 24 elders that was around the... That's what that's talking about. Because you had to have 24 around the King Abraham, honey. Yahweh is not playing with you. When, he, when I say everything goes according to his pattern, all you got to do is know what the, what's in there, right. he'll bring it, he'll put it together for you. Right. So then she went back unto Hagar and she had to submit herself unto Hagar. He had Ishmael. Abraham was 86 years old and he had Ishmael, right? Kobe, 86. 86 years old, right? Then 13 years passed by. Yahweh came to Abraham. He was 99 years old. Old man. And said, look, mm -hmm. you have to be circumcised. Ouch. What do you mean I have to be circumcised? You got to be circumcised. And you have to circumcise all the men in your household, the ones that you bought with money, the ones that you didn't buy with money. Right. Everybody got to be circumcised, period. Mm -hmm. I'd have been mad as hell if I was one of them ones bought with money. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got nothing to do with it. I ain't no Jew. But all of them had to be circumcised, right? Right. So then he said, now from this point forward, every male born after this point has to be circumcised on the eighth day. Right? Mm -hmm. Because number eight means what? New beginning. 
beginning. New beginning. And then after he circumcised him, then what did he do? Mm -hmm. To show forth a change. He changed his name from Abram to Abraham. He changed Sarai's name from Sarah to Sarah. He's making a change. He's cutting away the flesh, and that's when the change comes. You can't change no other way. Yahweh got you going through whatever you're going through to clean you up, and you're not going to do no, ain't going to be nothing coming from it. You ain't going to be blessed for nothing until the change is made. I don't care how much you kick and scream and holler. The change has to be made first, and you can't trick him into thinking that you changed right. either. Yahweh knows when you've changed. You can trick yourself sometimes and say, oh, I know I don't do, I done changed. I don't do that no more. When then y'all would pop one on you real quick and you're acting a fool again. And it, I'm trying to make you feel so small and so shame. It makes you cry so hard. Like, Yahweh, why did I do? And you get so pissed off at Satan. But Satan is doing a great job. He's a good devil for what Yahweh made him for. Because it's just cleaning you up. You have to, you have to go through this process. I don't care who you are. You got to go through it. Anyway, so then after he changed Abram's name to Abraham, then he said, same time this year, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. I ain't trying to be nasty. Right. But Yahweh said, I'm going to come and Sarah shall have a son. Mm -hmm. And so at 100 years old, Sarah got pregnant. And it said that Sarah laughed within herself. And he said, why Sarah laugh? Scared her to death. So I didn't laugh. Well, you didn't laugh out loud. But he heard... Yahweh heard you. That's right. And so then she, Isaac came on the scene, told him about the name and everything. Isaac came on the scene, right? And then he went through with Abraham. Then he said, offer up your only begotten son, Isaac, whom you love. He had to offer Isaac up. Why is that? What is that talking about? Because he, Isaac is talking about who? Elohim. I'm sorry too, but El, this is somebody in this state. Mm -hmm. Intermediate. The lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. Before this... This had already happened before he got on the cross. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Messiah had already been slain. That's what saved the angels. The blood of the lamb saved the angels, right? right. And so Isaac didn't have to come down, so that's representing El. So Isaac had to, instead of him being slain, mm -hmm. they offered up that ram instead. Mm -hmm. so this was a special prepared body. Right. So instead of the spirit going down, this special prepared body had to be offered up, right? They offered up that ram that was caught in the thickest by its horns. What's that talking about? The law and the prophets being caught. The Messiah was caught up by the law and the prophets with the sins of the world being those thorns, right? And so they offered up that ram instead of Isaac, his son, right? Okay. So then when he resurrects off that altar on the third day, that's when Abram, it was told Abram, look, your brother uh, Nahor, he's had children with, by Milcah and da 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 and all those. So, you know, he starts setting it up where he can go get Rebecca, his wife. That's before, that's right before the foundation of the world, before the foundation of the children of Israel. That's when he had to be slain and resurrect off the altar. And then he was able to go in unto his wife and find Rebecca so he can have, she can have Jacob and Esau and then change Jacob's name to Israel. That was the foundation of the children of Israel. Do y'all follow what I'm saying? So then when he goes in unto Rebecca, and she was barren too. Right, she was. And this is, <laughs> it threw these children off so bad the other day. So then when she was pregnant with twins, right? She went and inquired of Yahweh <laughs> what was going on in her. And what did he say? <laughs> it's two nations, two nations warring in you. Right. Warring? How? How? If he said it, I believe him. Yeah. Two, from the, I'm talking about from the womb. Two nations were, war them children were fighting in her womb. Right. Two nations are warring. The elder shall serve the younger, right? right. Clean up my house when you get out. Get the food. <laughs> he said the elder shall serve the younger. Anyway, that's a joke. So then, <laughs> he told that unto Rebecca. Isaac didn't know what Yahweh had told her, right? And so as the children are growing up, then uh, the birthright was Esau's. He was out hunting. He got hungry. So much so, he thought he was finna die. So he goes to his brother Jacob, and Jacob said, well, sell me your birthright then. I'll give you some, uh, something to eat. What is this birthright if I'm going to die? I don't care about this birthright. Give me some pottage and some bread, boy. So he gave him some pottage. He sold his birthright for a morsel of bread and some red pottage. It's what he thought of his birthright. Do you not see those? that just go on off into just doing whatever they want to do and then you try to tell them like look now alright mm -hmm. 
and they sell their soul for a little bit of this and a little bit of that, it don't it don't mean nothing to them. Eternal life means nothing to Satan at all. He don't he's not afraid to revile a dignitary right. at all. So then he sold his birthright. So then it going on, going on, going on. So then it came to the time where he had to actually give them the blessing. When uh, Isaac got old, he had to give them the blessing, right? So when he got ready to give them the blessing, Rebecca was like, uh, come here, Jacob. Let me tell you something. Look, you need to go in and I'm going to make this pottage. I'm going to make this venison for you. So you take it to your father so you can receive the blessing. He's like, uh-uh, uh-uh. I don't want to be, a, I don't want to seem like I'm tricking him at all. Y'all are going to do something to me. She said, well, let whatever curse be on me, but obey my voice. Right. Because she knew what y'all had told her. And so what she, she made the venison real quick put Esau's clothes on him and put some uh, fur because Esau was a hairy man. Right. Them sins. He was a hairy man. Right. And so he put fur on his hands and said, just in case mm -hmm. Jacob wanted to feel on them because right. Jacob couldn't see. Mm -hmm. And so then Esau went out to go hunt for the venison. So Jacob went in, took the uh, venison and everything to him and said, you know, Father, I'm here to get my blessing. Mm -hmm. He said, who are you? Are you Esau, my son? He said, yes, I am. He said, but you have the voice of Jacob. No, he said, come closer to me. And he smelled on him. He felt his skin, his, his, the hair, the fur. He said, you have the voice of Jacob, but you feel like Esau. And he gave him the blessing. And he ate the venison. It was good. And he gave him the blessing, right? And it said as soon as he left, that's when Esau came in. And so Esau was like, Father, I'm here to get my blessing. He said, who? Who are you? He said, I'm your son Esau. He trembled mm -hmm. and said, who? He said, Esau. He said, well, who is this that had come in and already received a blessing? And whoever he is, he shall be blessed. <laughs> and so Esau cried horribly. And I'm to my, I'm to my cry like he, I'm to, do you not have another blessing for me? Is his name not Jacob on purpose because he has supplanted me yet this two times? First he took my birthright, now he take my blessing? Mm -hmm. I'm talking about he took your birthright and you sold your birthright, oh, lying God. little fool. But Yahweh said the elders to serve the younger. Mm -hmm. Them children were so messed up the other day we read that. Before we even got through time, COVID face was so turned up. Amber face was turned up. I said, it's bothering y'all, ain't it? It's bothering y'all, ain't it? It seemed like he tricked. It's like, why? It don't feel right. Like, it's like he tricked them. Mm -hmm. And so I had to explain, because it bothered me for years. But yeah, this is Yahweh's purpose. Mm -hmm. right. She had to be obedient to what Yahweh told her. Yahweh said the elders shall serve the younger. And so that's why it had to go according to that purpose. Now, don't get it twisted. Don't think that your little lies can be forgiven and all that. Well, uh, Rebecca, Rebecca lied. Uh, Rahab lied. And da 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 da. What's my. You, no, nah, don't do that now. Because that was going according to Yahweh's purpose and righteousness. <coughs> you be trying to cover your little stuff up. That ain't the same thing. But anyway, so then he said he shall be blessed. Right? So then after all that happened, Esau, it said Esau sought it within his heart. After the mourning of his father, he was going to kill his brother Jacob. Mm -hmm. And it said it was told to Rebekah what, what he had said. <coughs> Who told Rebecca what he said if it was said in his heart? Mm -hmm. This is Yahweh carrying out his purpose to perfection. That's why you don't have to worry about, you don't have to lose no sleep out about what your enemy's trying to do to you, sweetheart. That don't work. You a son of Yahweh, they better be careful. And whatever you plan on doing, you better hurry and do it and get out the way. Because I have an Elohim, right? So then, she said, well, won't you go to my, my brother's house for a little while, for a few days. She said, for three days. For three days, go to my brother's house until your brother cool off. He was there for 21 years. <laughs> that three days turned into 21 years. <laughs> so then, he, but Yahweh's going, he's orchestrating, because Yahweh said that he had to go to meet his wife. His wife was over there at his mama brother's house, so his, it was good that Esau sought to kill him so his mama could make him send, go to his, Yahweh got all this going on for a reason. Right. Everything that Yahweh got is orchestrated for a purpose, right? So then he goes out there to his mama brother's house, Laban, old low down thing. And so Laban had a daughter, Rachel, that was beautiful. He loved Rachel. And so Laban told me, you work seven years for me, I'll give you my daughter Rachel. Right. He worked seven years. It seemed like it just went by just that fast. Mm -hmm. So when he went in and lay with Rachel, he ended up giving him Leah. I don't know how. Was it that dark? They didn't see who it was. I don't even know how they was doing that. So he ended up laying with Leah, not knowing that it was Leah. He thought it was Rachel, but he ended up laying with Leah. So he gave him Leah and said, he was like, you tricked me. 
You gave me the little ugly daughter. I don't want her. <laughs> well, you're stuck with her now, honey. If you want her, you got to work seven more years. So he worked seven more years for Rachel. So he got Rachel. Then he worked seven more years for his substance. Why you got to work seven years this and seven years that and seven years this? It looked like he was tricking him. And why would Laban even say seven years? Because Laban has to go according to a pattern, sugar. Because how many times was this blood flicked here? 21 times. Seven times for the high priest. Seven times for the people. I'm a rendering it, ain't it? And seven times for the sanctuary. You have to have those 21 times, right? Three sevens, right? Why would you go to the casino with a triple seven and you get the jackpot. They don't even know why. <laughs> jackpot, the second I flash, the little machine flash, you get your little money. Uh-uh, this the real money right here, ain't it? I need, it's time to sit down, ain't it? It's time to sit down. All right, all right. But anyway, my point is, my whole point in saying that, when you go back and look at this story back here, the reason why it's so much details that Yahweh showed Moses about Abraham, because you got to understand now, this was a vision that Moses had. Right. All this that we talking about Abraham and all these things that happened, this was a vision that Yahweh gave Moses. Mm -hmm. Why was there so many details with Abraham? Because Yahweh was telling his story through this. I'm talking about it's all going according to a pattern. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought that all these things have happened by a pattern? So then I, did, I forgot about the part where um, Isaac, his mama died at the age of 130, 127. She was 127 years old when Sarah died. How old was Sarah when she had Isaac? She was 90. Abraham was 100. Sarah was 90 when she had Isaac. So that means that Isaac was 37 years old when his mama died, right? That's 37. That's a death. That's a death, right? And it's also a blood. He cried and mourned for his mama for three years. That's, that's your water. And they buried her. That's a death burial, that's blood water. And then when Abraham sent his servant out to get his wife, his servant said, Yahweh, please be my, you know, go before me and do this thing for me. He gave him a sign he was looking for and everything. And so that was the spirit of Yahweh went forth and found his wife. And it said at the age of 40, he was comforted from his mother's um, death by his wife, Rebecca, mm -hmm. which was three years later. That's a death burial resurrection on, in three years. And it's also a blood water spirit. 40. Yahweh operates by a pattern in your life. That's why it's so important to go back to it. You can't come to him without blood water spirit 40. I'm not talking about come to him here or come to him here. I'm talking about within your Right. Yahweh had to show me when when you talk about it's the Messiah in you that brings you to the Father. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have it like a, a, a just off somewhere, like you standing before a judgment seat type thing, and somebody bring you. It's not like that. Right. We had the conversation. We have so many good conversations in the bathroom mm -hmm. at our house. Sometimes <laughs> we were talking about it, and I, I remember remember when um. Let me find a good example. So, for example, when we said um, no man know the day or the hour. Right? When y'all were gonna take this thing out. Right. That's knowledge. That's knowledge, right? Okay. What is the Messiah? He's a wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh's purpose and his plan, right? Right? That's the that's the Holy Spirit. That's what the Holy Spirit is. So the knowledge is no man knows the day or the hour, but you know what I'm saying, but Yahweh. So when the two thousand thing hit and we were all thinking it was gonna end in two thousand and da 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 da. And we woke up the next day and it was still, we were still here. We was confused. And we got to class and Yahweh had to preach from us from the floor. Going through that experience, the knowledge of Yahweh's purpose and his plan, that brought us to that knowledge. It, brought, it made us one with that knowledge now. Now we know for sure that no man knows that, that Yahweh is knowledge. Right. And so the, that's Yahweh. No man knows the day or the hour. That's Yahweh, which is knowledge. But the Holy Spirit, which is the wisdom knowledge of his purpose, brings you to that understanding or to that knowledge. Do you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's the Messiah in you or the wisdom knowledge of Yahweh's purpose in you that brings you to the consciousness of who you are or the consciousness of the, of the knowledge. Does that make sense? Y'all follow what I'm saying? For another one. All things work to the good of those that love Yahweh. We say it all the time. But it's not until you actually go through some things and it seemed like it's so horrible. I'm, man, why do we have to go through that? That was just so horrible. Who would have thought that Joseph would be put in prison for something that he didn't do? He didn't even try to rape that woman, but he was put in prison for something he didn't even do. 
But what did Joseph say? After, after everything was said and done and he was out of jail and everything and he was over a Pharaoh house, what did he tell his brethren? You meant it for the evil. Yahweh meant it for the evil. But Yahweh meant it for the good. For this day hath Yahweh saved Israel alive. alive. So that brought him to the knowledge and understanding that all things work together for the good of them that love Yahweh. So it's experiences that you have to go through. And when you go through those experiences, it's the Holy Spirit in you that brings back to your remembrance what Yahweh had already told you before. So when you go through it like, dog, okay, Yahweh did say that all things work together for the good. Of the that's what this is. Oh, wow. It's good to be here. And that's the Messiah in you bringing you to Yahweh. Right. Which is knowledge. Does that make sense? It's beautiful. Look, the pattern dictates it. It dictates everything that we have to go through, but you can't even come to this point without blood, water, spirit uh, for the first. Mm -hmm. And then when you get to this point, then there's a dying off, and then the Messiah in you is what takes you on over. But what had to happen first is, Yahweh had to cause one man and one man only in that whole entire age and dispensation mm -hmm. and give him a vision and him a vision only. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a whole bunch of different men having no visions. Right. That ain't what that was. He never did that. He only, because it's fair. It's only one door in the ark. <laughs> okay. I ain't got time. It's time to go. We've been. Okay. It's been time to go. He ain't run the bell though. But I'm, I, I appreciate it. But I know we're finna go. <laughs> So he gave Moses a vision and told Moses, look, you go down there and you deliver my people out of Egypt. But he said, I'm going to be the one to deliver my people mm -hmm. out of Egypt, right? Mm -hmm. Told Abraham that, right? Told Moses the same thing. I am come down to deliver them up out of Egypt. That's right. Now go and get them out of Egypt then. Right. Okay. What are you talking about, y'all? Because Moses, you got to understand that you are Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So Moses had excuses at first. I, I can't speak plain. I, I, I killed a man down there. And that, 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 that he had to say that. And Yahweh had to tell him, look, all that sought your life, Moses, are dead. So when he sent Joseph down there into Egypt, when he had the Messiah, and he said, that, look, you're going to have to come, up, come, up, come out of Egypt, my son. And he said, wait a minute, here I trying to kill this child. He said, all that sought this child's life are dead. My son has to come up out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. So he's fulfilling everything that he had going on back here was talking about what the Messiah had to go through, right? And so then when he, all that sought your life, Moses, the dead, going back down and get my children because my son has to come up out of Egypt. Because mm -hmm. he had to come up out of Egypt back there with uh, Abraham. Sarah had to be de delivered. They had to be delivered too. And so Moses had to come. How did he have to come do it? He had to have Abram with him. Him. He had to have the rod in his hand. He had to have the rod, which is the truth, the law and the prophets. And that's what came down and brought them up out of Egypt. Now, Moses was free. He wasn't in bondage. They were in bondage, though. Moses was free to come go about as he pleased, going back and forth to Pharaoh, back and forth to Pharaoh, back and forth to Pharaoh. He wasn't building no treasure houses, but they were. But I bet you when, when Yahweh whispered in his ear, tell him to take out a lamb, I bet Moses better had took out a lamb. Right. Otherwise, he wasn't going to come up out of Egypt. And so all of them had to have the blood on the inside of their house, on that door, right? And they all had to come to and through the Red Sea, which is my water. And the cloud that led them with the spirit of Yahweh in it was that spirit. And they were out here for 40, 40 years. The only way they can get to this door was by blood, uh, water, and spirit. Go through the door and you got the 40, right? Same thing here. You got the blood, the water, the spirit, and then you got the 40 in this, in the uh, holy place, right? You got the blood, water, spirit, and 40 in here. You follow what I'm saying? Everything is going according to the pattern. Everything. That's why it's, because that's what establishes your faith when you right. see something over and over and over again. It can't be made up. This can't come from no man. It can't. Man will error too many way, too many times. And if you stick to the script, you ain't got to worry about messing up nothing. Stick to the script. It's simple. It feeds the multitude with two little fish and five loaves of bread. You look now. I'm gonna get on down. Get on down. Get on down. Get on down. I love Yahweh, and I'm so thankful for the obedience that Yahweh has placed in me and the desire that He's put in my heart to keep it straight and keep it simple. I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful for the brethren that Yahweh has given us okay. in the school and outside of the school. One of our brethren, Felicia Hamilton from Southfield, texted me yesterday. She was like, girl, mm -hmm. I just watched the, 11, uh, the class from 1117, and the same thing you said is the same thing that Yahweh showed me at the symposium um, at the uh, thing in Albuquerque, too, or whatever, because I had been snubbing people, too. <laughs> I said, well, I'm glad Yahweh showed that to you, honey, because me, too. 
it's time to come on home. Mm -hmm. He's calling all his from near and far. Mm -hmm. From I'm talking about from near and far. Mm -hmm. And it's time to, Yahweh, he got the ride now. Mm -hmm. He's bringing his sheep in because they hear his voice and he's driving the ones away that don't, that don't want to hear it. And that's fine. Oh. I'm excited about June because mm -hmm. what, what Yahweh got me looking at with that, not that we're going to give such a perfect presentation or nothing like that to help somebody. It ain't nothing about them already like that. But what Yahweh is doing, he's actually going to use it to perfect the sons. Not to give a perfect presentation from here to there, but he's perfecting it in everybody. Because you got some now that, that Yahweh is calling on that ain't never really had the chance, you know, do it for real, for real. But now Yahweh is calling like, look, with the PowerPoint presentation. It's not about the PowerPoint presentation like that. Yahweh's do Yahweh, that came from Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Yahweh's doing that to bring them to a higher understanding of who he really, they have to know for sure too. Right. With their profession, Yahweh has allowed them to do that profession for so long to it's, it's like that now. Mm -hmm. But Yahweh's going to show them what it's really all about now. Mm -hmm. Even with, with account with school. You have to go, you got timetables and things like that, but it don't mean, it don't mean nothing to you until you actually have to use it in your everyday right. life. That's and then right. Yahweh show you what it's really all about. Mm -hmm. It had nothing to do with two times two for real. Mm -hmm. It's about paying your bills. Mm -hmm. you, you get what I'm saying? It's amazing to me. Yahweh is doing so much, and I see the growth that Yahweh's got going on. Right. This is about going home. We waiting for that very last soul mm -hmm. to come on in right. so we can wrap it on up. Right. I hope y'all enjoyed class this morning because I have. <laughs> I'm sweating about to pass out. Y'all even let my baby stay asleep. I'm so happy about that, even though he looked in a mess. Um, but anyway, um, again, our event is June 25th through June 28th to register you. Register at IDMR Meridian Mississippi, I mean Meridian MS at gmail.com. It's free to register. The hotels are actually being booked pretty fast, so we got 90 something people already registered so far. So registration needs to hurry and um, be done because after it's done, I'm, I can't add nobody else. Another thing too, next class, I want to get all the information for all the other events because we have plans on going to the Chicago event in April. Um, then the Springfield has an event in June. The Lansing class has an event in July, and then. Orlando has an event the end of July, the first part of August, so I'll have all the information next Sunday mm -hmm. for all those that want to um, look at attending any of those events. And I will have it for um, YouTube, too, because a lot of people have been asking about the times and dates and stuff, and I didn't have it with me this morning. But um, if nothing else, I'm going to say hallelujah. Are there any questions? Any comments? Any announcements? If not, let it stand for doxology. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory for exceeding joy. To the unwise Elohim, our Savior, to Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all times, now and forever. Let us all say, Hallelujah.